walking through Salem, Massachusetts, right by the Atlantic Ocean here. Beautiful. Oh, the air smells like mussels, paella, clam chowder. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Love this ocean air smell. Everyone is so relaxed and kind and chilled out here. It's quite amazing. Look at this. Wow. Look at this, we found a beach. Oh, this is beautiful. Mmm, smells just like New England. Wow. Beautiful. Wow, look at this. Welcome to the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. My favorite ocean, if you ask me. I've always been a fan of the Atlantic. Mm. It has a different feel than the Pacific. The Atlantic Ocean makes you think of lobsters and fishing boats, hurricanes hardened people and the Pacific makes you think of surfers I've never been a surfer I would love to surf someday though but wow 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 look at the Atlantic Ocean here Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Unbelievably pretty here. Just incredibly pretty. Walking through the streets of Salem here. You can see these old houses. This old, old looking house. This one's from 1800. You can feel how old these houses are. This looks like it's from the 1700s. 1802. 1807. Thomas McGowan, a shipwright, lived here. Alice Parker, Alice Parker, victim of the Salem Witch Trials, Lived in a small house on this land when she was tried and convicted for witchcraft in September 1692. Alice was hanged on September 22, 1692. Alice Parker stated her innocence from the beginning and maintained her avowal throughout her trial. Alice's body was disposed of in an unmarked grave now lost. On August 28, 1957, Massachusetts officially apologized for the Salem witch trials. Well, that's good. On October 31, 2001, Alison Parker's name was added to the list of innocent victims that Alice was illegally cleared of her crimes. That's good. Witch City, USA. Okay. We're here in Witch City, USA, not in the, uh, the busy season, luckily. The busy season starts in about uh, a week, really, uh, the month before Halloween. Um, I didn't want to come right in the middle of the busy season. I'm not a big fan of big crowds. Uh, so it's pretty quiet. I'm like, 
look like one of the only tourists out here. People give me funny looks. That's okay. I'm a funny looking person, aren't I? We're on our way to the Gables house, which is some sort of significant historical site here. Okay, yes, we're going to the House of the Seven Gables here. We're on Derby Street. A sign of 2021. <laughs> And alas, we have reached the House of the Seven Gables here. The entrance. Okay, so we are here at the House of the Seven Gables. 1668. The House of the Seven Gables was built by Salem Sea Captain and Merchant John Turner in 1668. So this house is almost 400 years old. Oh my God. It's amazing it didn't get taken down by a hurricane. It was occupied by three generations of the Turner family before being sold to Captain Samuel Ingersoll in 1782. Ingersoll was a ship captain during the Great Age of Sail. It appeared after the American Revolution Salem merchants traded across the world. He died at sea and left the property to his daughter Susanna. A cousin of famed author Nathaniel Hawthorne Hawthorne's visit to his cousin's home are credited with inspiring the setting and the title of the, 19, the 1851 novel House of the Seven Gables. Please comment below if you've read House of the Seven Gables. I'm doing this self-guided tour, so we're supposed to now proceed through these beautiful flower gardens here. Look at this. Gorgeous. This is cool. Look at this. So we do have to explore this colonial belt. The Seaman's Bethel Bell. The bell hung in the Seaman's Bethel building once occupied the site. The Young Men's Bethel Society built the structure in 1888 as a place for sailors to attend religious services. Cool. Look at all these boats. Oh, look at the uh, stork or crane. It's a crane. Okay, so we did the House of the Seven Gables and we're on our way to the Chestnut Street Cemetery, which is apparently dates back to 1627 or 1637. Oh man, I smell some sort of fish cooking here. Mmm. Woo! That smells great. Look at these houses. How cool is this? And on our way to the cemetery, we found the Salem Maritime National Historic Site. Sixteen seventy-five Narbonne House. Oh wow! Look at this. It's gonna be a nice view here. Seems like people here are pretty used to tourists. They don't seem to get too annoyed. I mean, the Narbonne house is uh, the one we passed by, 1675. Thomas Ives was a slaughterer or butcher, was the first uh, owner. Cool. All right, let's see what else. Oh wow, apparently you can walk out all the way to the water here. The Derby House here, the oldest surviving brick building in Salem from 1762. Cool. 
This guy's got his little quilt pen. He's all dressed up to probably just get painted. I doubt he's looks like that 24-7. So we'll probably head back up to Essex Street and then head over to the cemetery. And juxtaposed with all the pagan and voodoo and Wicca is the Christians are still here. <laughs> so I asked someone last night what percentage of uh, Salem would be uh, pagan and she said about 20%. This guy here is the Apostle of Temperance, like the Temperance card. So this is the Charter Street Cemetery. You can see how old all these gravestones look. This is a memorial for <laughs> Susanna Martin, hanged July 19th, 1962. Wow, look at this letter. Someone wrote this month to their great grandmother, Susanna. Generational. Wow. Amazing. I promise to live in your power of the divine feminine. Exactly what I was talking about about Black Moon Lilith. Exactly Black Moon Lilith. Elizabeth Howe. See these these women, these Salem witch trial women represent that Black Moon Lilith. Power of the suppressed divine feminine. And look at these old gravestones here. Wow. This is really cool. George Jacobs. John Proctor hanged August 19th, 1692. And there is a presence here. This is a vortex, I feel. There's a power here. It's a bit of a dark presence. It's an old presence. I mean, look at these old, look at these gravestones from 16, 1700s, 1800s, unbelievable can feel their spirits that do walk around here. There are definitely spirits that walk around here. Wow. So should I go on a ghost tour? So we're at the Pentagram Witchcraft and Magic Shop and apparently the owners are pretty well known. The girl that works here was just telling me that the reason there's this stain on the sidewalk is someone came by, a uh, Christian came by earlier in the day and threw holy oil all over their steps and, <laughs> and left them a letter. So it's exactly what we've been talking about this whole trip about Black Moon Lilith. Candles. And they do readings back here. Love these statues here. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course, when you come to Salem, you have to get your crystal dildos. We have the general normal person size and then we have the giant, the Nephilim cock. So if you want to pleasure yourself with a Nephilim dick, you can come to Salem. So if you're a Gemini, you definitely have to come here. So we are here in Salem Willows Park. A little bit cloudy today. There's a cool trolley going by. But this is a really cool place. Look at this tree. Wow. Look at this willow tree. Beautiful, beautiful. What an energy.
energy here. Oh wow, look at this one. Last night it was a little freaky uh, going on a ghost tour. Ooh, get the water. Hello, Mr. Seagull. Little brown seagulls. Oh, I love the smell here. It's always Halloween in Salem, Massachusetts. Look at this guy. these pirates. <laughs> So you know Salem is the legit witch city when even the police boats have witches on them. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so here on Winter Island, this is the old officer's barracks. Well, this was a Coast Guard base. There's a very weird vibe to it. Ahoy, matey, a pirate ship out on the high seas. If you're a pagan or a Wiccan like me, don't be pooping on people. So to wrap it up from Salem, Massachusetts, what an interesting place here. Uh, a lot of tourists, for sure. A lot of locals, but people tend to move here from all over the place, it seems like. Definitely a place of, you know, both light and dark, like all spiritual vortexes are. Pretty creepy after dark, <laughs> but beautiful with all the water around and so many cool shops. And like, if you're Wiccan or Pagan, it's kind of a haven, you know, to, to check out. At least like half of the shops are like Wicca or Pagan themed. So, fascinating place, yeah. So I'm about to leave the state of Massachusetts. So before I do, just a little recap of my trip to Salem. Salem is a really interesting place. Powerful place, powerful energy. Uh, I think some ley lines cross near there. You can tell just there's a, a very spiritual energy to the place and it's just a very interesting place. Lots of interesting people, um, lots of very kind people, really interesting old you know historical sites. The legacy of the Salem Witch Trials, as I talked about in one of the other videos on my channel, the Salem kind of carries the energy of Black Moon Lilith, of the suppressed Divine Feminine, and now the power of the Divine Feminine that's continuing to come up and start to overtake that shadow masculine force that's been ruling over the planet during the age of Pisces and really during the entire Kali Yuga since the end of Lemuria and Atlantis. So it holds that powerful energy. It's a haven for Wiccans and Pagans. Um, if you're Wiccan or Pagan like me, you know, it's one of the only places in the country, you know, maybe Lilydale is another one in New York State and there's an, another one in Florida that's pretty interesting. 
you know, where it's a normal thing. Like, you know, most places where you live, you know, there's little pockets. You go to the, the crystal shops, the spiritual, the metaphysical shops, uh, the tarot readers, but it's kind of an underground thing. In Salem, it's wide, it's wide open. So if you're pagan, Wiccan, or if you're just um, a fan of like witchy shows, there's a lot of, a lot of the tourists there wear witches hats and you can tell a lot of them are fans of like Twilight and teenage girl witch shows and things like that. So if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, that's a great place to go. A Hocus Pocus had filmed there. I never found it, but there's a, apparently a statue of a witch from, from Hocus Pocus. So if you're into any of that sort of stuff or you just, you're really into Halloween, uh, the entire month of October, you know, already in September, there were many Halloween decorations up, but the entire month of October is just crazy packed there with people from all over the world coming for Halloween. Even in September when I was there, um, I saw tourists from all over the country and from Europe. So it's a it's a worldwide destination, it really is. The food is fantastic. I had some amazing fish. I had uh, some great Mexican food. I locked my keys in the car um, on, the, on the day out. I used to have a Mercury Sable. And for those of you who know the old Mercury Sables, there's a keypad on the side, which I don't understand why why more cars in the modern era don't have these keypads. It's so convenient. Because what I used to do, even when I was traveling, I used to just, you know, use the keypad and then I would just drop the, the keys, you know, in the, the glove compartment or even just, you know, somewhere in the car. And then I didn't have to worry about dropping them, especially if I had shorts on like I have now. Well, just, you know, mindlessly I did that yesterday. And uh, so I had to call for a AAA. And the guy came in like 20 minutes. He was so kind. He got my keys for me in about five seconds. Literally, like, I think for the time he got out of his car till when my car was open, it was maybe 40 seconds at most. The guy was like that. And he just then stood there for the next 20 minutes just talking to me. I wasn't even asking questions. He just was telling me about every pos every restaurant he loves in, in Mobblehead and in Salem and in the other towns and just about how people thought he was a... Uh, uh, a hillbilly because he wears cowboy boots. He's a potato farmer from Maine. You know, just the, and there were a lot of people like that. Just really kind people. The people at the Airbnbs. I met so many really kind people in Massachusetts. That's one thing I'll say about Massachusetts. Very kind people. You know, the, the history uh, of the witch trials there are fascinating. If you're an empath like me, I would avoid the ghost tours after dark. I would do do your exploring during the day. It's just the, the ghost tours are a little bit on the creepy and dark side of things, kind of uncomfortably dark. You know, if you're an empath, and I know most people watching my channel are empaths, I would explore more during the day. There's a self-guided app where you can kind of tour on your own and see some of the cool sites. After dark, there's a lot of people out as well, but the city tends to kind of close down at about 10 o'clock. But there's so many shops, different witchy shops and clothing stores and you know, different tourist things, and it's a really cool place to be. Fun vibe to it, you know, just with people coming from all over the world and all the witches' hats, and I'm sure Halloween's a crazy, weird, and fun time. There's definitely a lot of magic in the city. You can tell there's both white and dark magic. There's also Christians there. It's about 20% pagan, but 20% of a city of 50,000 is, but, you know, eight, I think it's like 40 some thousand. So it's like 8,000 practicing witches in um, in Salem. That's a lot, you know, just for a small area. It really is. That's why it's Witch City USA. The police badges have uh, have witches on them. So, really fascinating place. Uh, definitely worth a trip if you haven't been there. I saw so much pretty scenery, too, around Salem. Beautiful New England beaches just to smell the ocean air. Beautiful, beautiful area. And then, you know, Western Massachusetts I explored a bit, too. And Western Massachusetts is gorgeous mountains and rivers and just unbelievable scenery. Massachusetts is an amazing state. So thank you. I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you're someone who found me and you're not familiar with me, you know, I'm Matthew John. I'm a spiritual teacher and intuitive healer. I do astrology. I do tarot. I do soul plan readings where I look into people's life plans. Go to my website, youareadivinehuman.org. Check me out. The link is in the description box below. And please, please do like and subscribe this video. And I'm offering what's called my spiritual mentoring program. It's a, a really popular way that people work with me for people who are looking to transform in all ways to transform physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally to up level to the next stage of their soul's journey here in the earth body. 
this is really what I specialize in. And I, I do offer a la carte individual, just one-off sessions, but I really love when people do my spiritual mentoring programs. There's four, five, six, 10, 15, 20 session packages. The one I recommend if you're starting out with me is a six. Uh, the 10 or 15 are fine too, but I really recommend uh, starting with at least the six. And I'll just go over real quick what you get in that six session package C, the spiritual mentor. We start with a one hour and 40 minute, what's called a soul plan reading. What I'm doing in the soul plan reading is I'm connecting with your life plan. I'm connecting with your spirit guides. I'm connecting with your soul's template, what your life plan is for this lifetime. Because we all have a life plan, our souls, plan out much of the major events that happen in our life beforehand. Really nothing happens by accident. And I let you know why certain things happen in your past, what you were meant to learn from them, what was the karma that was carried over from other lifetimes that caused those things to happen. Really the number one thing that people get after the soul plan reading, they get a sense of relief, of peace, because they finally understand why things happen to them. I'm also gonna look into your future. And the life plan isn't just something that's uh, set in stone linear. There's many different possibilities, many different possible timelines that one could take you know, based on their free will choices. And I'm gonna give you those possibilities, what your future might look like. We'll look into soul contracts between relationships. You know, if you've always wanted to know, did you know your wife or girlfriend or brother or boyfriend or sister or mom or dad in a past life, you probably did. I'm going to tell you what happened in those past lives. I'm also going to tell you what karma, negative, positive, got carried over from those other lifetimes and how it's affecting your relationship in this lifetime and how what you need to do to work those contracts out, you know, because that's really alchemy is the ultimate destination of all karmic relationships. I'll let you know where your soul's from, if you're an earth seed from earth or if you're a soul from somewhere else in, uh, in the galaxy. I'll let you know if you're, you know, what type of light worker you are and really any questions at all that you have, I'll be able to answer for you. So that's all in the first session, uh, the soul planning. The second session, we do some deep healing work. It, it's a nearly two hour session. We do an inner child healing. We do a process of removing negative cords between yourself and other people that are causing negative patterns or bad energy for you. And then we do a soul retrieval, calling back to you any parts of your soul that were uh, that had broken away due to trauma. And then I'm going to call in a group of healing angels that have been working with me for years and all my clients just say how much they love having these angels around them and how good it feels. And they work on me sometimes too and I feel them. They're beautiful uh, beings. And um, you'll lay down and they'll be working on you. It's kind of like energetic surgery. They're gonna be removing all the blockages from your chakras, chakra blockages, cause unnecessary obstacles in your life, cause mental health issues, physical health issues, cause abundance issues, cause unnecessary negative emotions. They're gonna be removing those blockages, replacing those blockages with brand new energy to help the chakras grow because not everyone has their chakras fully developed. Actually, most people don't. And after the session, you know, people just feel amazing. They feel so light. Uh, we remove any negativity from your uh, from your aura. There could be attachments. There could be implants. There could be all sorts of weird stuff. We get all that out. Hooks and you know all sorts of etheric parasites and weird stuff like that. We get all that out. And we seal up your aura, and uh, we work on uh, using universal codes. Work on physical issues as well. And people have had long-standing physical issues get much better after the session. So that's all in session two. Session three, we go into your physical health from, from the physical level. I use my psychic vision, my medical intuitive skills to look into your physical body. I'm looking at your organs. I'm looking at how your organs are functioning. I'm looking at your blood, what sort of heavy metals, viruses, bacteria you have, what uh, minerals might be low. I'm looking at your neurotransmitters, what neurotra neurotransmitters are low. I'm looking at you know, the, what's going on in the gut, bacteria, candida, uh, viruses, you know, do you have high hydrochloric acid, do you have low hydrochloric acid? So even though I'm using my psychic vision, I'm looking at it very scientifically, I'm also gonna go over your medical history with you, and uh, we're gonna put together a protocol of all things that are without prescription, supplements, homeopathy, energy frequency healings, affirmations, exercises, and much more, and I'm gonna put it all together for you in a protocol that you can have uh, to keep to follow along with. I also do a scan of all your chakras using a pendulum to, uh, to let you know exactly what each of your chakras looks like and which ones you need to work on going forward and how to do that. And then the fourth session we do, the star seed discovery session, it's amazing stuff. You're gonna find out where your soul comes from, if you're an earth seed or if you're a star seed, 
you happen to be an earth seed, it's still a valuable session because I'm going to tell you exactly where you came from. Did you come from the animal kingdom? Uh, did you come from the Pleiades into Earth? How that works? Most people watching this, even if you just found me, are is a star seed. And I encourage you to watch my video that I did. It's actually got the most views of any video on this channel, all about star seeds, and that link is below. I'm going to tell you exactly where your soul comes from. In this galaxy, outside the galaxy, can get very complex. Sometimes people have more than one soul working through them. I'll let you know how many souls you have, where each soul comes from. I'll, let you, I'll give you kind of a picture of the hierarchy of consciousness that, you know, all the higher aspects of you that are really um, ultimately expressing through your physical vessel. And then you're going to put you under hypnosis and you're going to take a guided hypnosis journey, an astral journey to your home planet, place of origin. It's, it's a bucket list experience. People cry, people don't want to leave, people start channeling spontaneously. I've had a number of people over the past couple of years that had never really channeled before that started spontaneously channeling really, really intricate information in the Starseed session. It's it's incredible. I'm a galactic researcher and I'm also, you know, taking lots of notes and, and keeping all sorts of notes on all the different sorts of uh, galactic races out there. So it's, it's such a great session and it's very unique. And then the fifth session, we do a past life regression session. So this is to um, discover your past lives on Earth. Again, I'm gonna put you under hypnosis and we're gonna have you led into different other lifetimes that your soul uh, have experienced. And um, some of these are in the current timeline, some of these are in other timeline, and you're gonna get to see uh, two or three or four of these lifetimes, depending on how fast we go through. We're gonna go the space between lives as well. You're gonna see what that looks like and feels like, and we're gonna have you channel through information, I'll channel through information about what karma is carried over from these lifetimes, what it means for your current life. So by the end, it's you'll understand so much better your current lifetime. Because really, the biggest obstacles, the biggest problems, the biggest karmic experiences all come from other lifetimes. And by knowing exactly what happened in those other lifetimes, it really does help you to be able to move forward and to, to heal things. And possibly to even avoid or circumvent or have a softer route through karmic experiences that are in your life plan if you understand them and you move through the lessons faster. And this is our power of moving to different timelines. So really understanding yourself better through the spiritual mentoring package or through the soul plan reading or through this past life regression session can help you to move to a higher timeline. In the sixth session, again, talking about timelines, we do the future self progression where I guide you on a hypnosis journey into your future on your highest possible timeline. Your highest possible timeline. Uh, one year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, etc. And you actually get to meet your future self Self, your most ascended future self could be 20, 30, 50 years in the future and you get to have a conversation with them and get direct guidance from them. Again, this is a bucket list thing, life changing. That's all package C, the six sessions. I highly recommend that. I also offer four and five session packages. I also offer 10, 15, or 20 session packages. You have one year to use up all the sessions, so don't be afraid to get one of the bigger packages and just, you can spread them out. I have a one and two payment option on all packages. Package A and B, you get three bonus courses, Putting the Past in the Past, Mastering Your Intuition, and Spiritual Hygiene, Grounding, Core Cutting 101. With packages C and D, you get all of my courses and webinars, except for the Comprehensive Tarot course. Well, there are 16 of them. It's over 35 hours of content that you can watch or listen to on your own in between sessions. I know it sounds like a lot. Some people are right now watching, so are like, yes, I'm gonna do every one. Like, if you're a type A personality or a Virgo type personality, right? And some people are like, oh, I don't got time to do all that. Either way is fine. They're not required, they're just supplemental. Either way, you can work with me. And if you are interested in doing both the Spiritual Mentoring Program and the Tarot Course, that's great too and you get a $100 discount. You get a $100 discount if you do both. We're going all the way into mid-December and you can join in at any time and watch the replays at your own pace. You do get a certification of completion of the program as long as I you tell me that you've uh, watched all the replays and you demonstrate your proficiency that you've learned something that you can uh, read the tarot with some level of proficiency. By the end of the course, I will give you the certificate of completion and that's a great thing to have. And the people on the tarot course, the most common thing I'm hearing is, wow, this is really in depth and wow this is one of the best courses I've ever taken. So, tarot course and a spiritual mentoring package go great together. I also offer all the sessions that I uh, talked about a la carte. If you can't do a package, if you have any questions about the spiritual mentoring program, about the tarot course, about any of the options, um, or just about anything that I might know about, please email me. My email is in the comment box below. Please go to my website. You can click on uh, if you're on your desktop, my uh, face, it says, have a question, ask Matthew, click on that, type in your question or email address, or go to the contact me page, do the same thing. 
You can even DM me on Instagram, and my Instagram is in the uh, description box below as well. Everything is in the description box below. Please, I would so appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm. Let's get YouTube to uh, put this video out there. Thank you so much everyone for, for being here and watching my video and uh, please remember to be kind to yourself, to be kind to others, to be kind to animals, and be kind to the earth. With love, this is Matthew John. Namaste.